All over Europe you can find many different sturgeon species as well as hybrids in aquaculture. However, many of those species either being not native or consisting of stocks that are not native to the area uh, they are produced. Uh, uh, due to accidents, for example floods or also incidental stockings, these fish can also be found in our wild water bodies which may cause problems for the natural population. The Siberian sturgeon, Atsipensa beri, is the most common species in aquaculture. It can grow also up to 2 meters in length and weigh roughly 100 kilograms. Um, it's quite similar to the stellet, uh, but what's uh, very typical for this species is that this has an all grayish color which can go also into black or brownish tones but uh, all the scutes have the same color as the underground and you can also see uh, that on the fins you will find no white seams. The snout in general is long and pointed, although it can differ between uh, different river populations. The white sturgeon, Azipensa transmontanus, is native in the, on the western coast of North America and the Pacific and is imported, was imported to Europe for uh, caviar and meat production, is farmed quite intensively in Italy. Uh, it can reach up to six and a half meters in length, so it can grow quite big. Uh, and the stock which is farmed is actually of the southern stock from California and very typical for this stock is the very short and round snout with the barbels located closer to the tip of the snout than to the mouth. Uh, you'll find this round and flat snout in, in none of the, the Nubian species. Coloration is normally light gray with white scutes but in some specimens it is also a little bit darker going into black and brownish tones. Uh, when compared to the Russian sturgeon, uh, the snout is shorter in this species, in the Russian sturgeon at least it has a little bit of a triangular shape and also in the, this species you find no small scutes behind the dorsal fin to the caudal fin which are generally present in Russian sturgeon. The Adriatic sturgeon, Akipensa nakkari, uh, farmed for meat and caviar in both Spain and Italy quite a lot and also used for reintroduction efforts in the Adriatic Basin. Uh, fish that can also reach roughly two meters in size. Uh, very typical and very similar to the white sturgeon. You have this very round, very short and broad snout with the barbels located closer to the tip of the snout than the mouth and it's way rounder and broader than you would find it in Russian sturgeon. Um, coloration is uh, grayish with some olive green tones and juveniles have a dark camouflage pattern which is uh, quite unique in European sturgeon species. You can only find it in American lake sturgeons as well. Um, when compared to the white sturgeon you have here some more scutes which are not present in white sturgeons. Otherwise, you can only really mistake it for a white sturgeon as those two species are the only species which have this very, very round and broad snout. The, the Bester is one of the more common hybrids uh, already during communist times and it's a hybrid between the Beluga, the Vusuruso and the Sterlet, the Atsipensa rutenus. And again it has traits of both species 
what you can see is the bulky, bulky and quite robust appearance of the beluga. You have a little bit smaller scutes than in the beluga and more of them, while the snout is elongated like the sterlet. Uh, the easiest trait to identify this species is the mouth. Because the mouth is quite large, it has a little roundish shape, but it never reaches the side of the head. So in the beluga, the mouth would be even more round and would reach the side of the head here and here. Uh, but it, this is not happening in this Vesta hybrid. This is a hybrid between the Russian sturgeon, Atsipensa gultensterti, and the sterlet, Atsipensa rutenus. And in hybrids you always have traits from uh, both parental species. And it always differs which species uh, is the maternal specimen and which species is the paternal specimen. Uh, in this case, uh, you'll find that the snout is quite similar to the Russian sturgeon, so quite short, but nevertheless very pointed. Uh, the coloration is also very similar to the Russian sturgeon, but you can see that there's quite a lot of lateral scutes. So there are way more lateral scutes than what you would find in pure Russian sturgeon. So this is a trait which comes from the sterlet as parental specimen.